to prove to you from Scripture that feminism is a serious and wicked sin in the eyes of God. So first of all, what are the roles of women? Well, first of all, a woman is supposed to submit to their husbands. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 16. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception, and sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 22 to 24. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Colossians 3.18 Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, as it is fit in the Lord. Second of all, this kind of goes back to the first point, the head of the woman is the man. 1 Corinthians 11, 13, or sorry, verse 3, 1 Corinthians 11, 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. So we see the hierarchy there. The head of the head of Christ, or sorry, the head of the man is Christ, the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is of course God the Father. So the hierarchy is the woman, the head of the woman is the man. The woman submits to their husband. Next point, the woman's role is to marry, have children, and be keepers at home. Or also guide the house. Titus chapter two, verses three to five. The age of woman likewise, that they be in behavior, has become with holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young woman to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, at the word of God be not blasphemed. 1 Timothy 5.14 I will therefore that the younger one marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. So you see the role. Be keepers at home, obedient to their own husbands. Or like this verse says, Titus chapter 5 verse 14, they're supposed to marry, have children, and guide the house. That's simple. Feminism stands against all of this. That's why it's a sin. Next point, women are supposed to dress modestly. Titus chapter 2 verse 9. Or just sorry, not Titus. First Timothy chapter two, verse nine. First Timothy two nine. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness, in sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. Modest apparel, just you know, decently, not short shorts, not short skirts, that kind of stuff, uh, not bikinis. You know, modest apparel. You know, covering. The certain spots of your body, covering the certain parts of your body, and also look at it as not embroidered hair or girl or gold or pearls or costly array. Right? Not supposed to be all you know fancy looking or you know look all all rich and well not rich and famous, but look all expensive and that kind of stuff. Just modestly, decently. Not supposed to draw attention to yourselves. That simple. Feminism again stands against this. What about in the church? Women are supposed to keep silent in the church. First Corinthians fourteen. 34, or sorry, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 34 to 35. Let your women keep silent, silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. For if they'll learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. And of course, women are not supposed to teach either. They're not supposed to be teaching or preaching in the church. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. So again, feminism is against this. When feminism creeps into the professing churches, you have women bishops. You have female uh, uh, deacons and pastors, and, and some of these churches even have sodomite deacons and pastors. Feminism is antichrist. It is against 
the standards of the word of God for women. And isn't it amazing how feminists are always very angry, very depressed, very sad? Studies have shown. Uh, I showed this in one of my earlier videos uh, a while back, a couple months ago, many months ago actually, that women are, are more likely, they're more happier when they are keepers at home, when they're housewives. But feminism says, oh no, women, they should be in the workforce, they should, you know, dress uh, in immodest apparel, all this other stuff. Uh, and it's also amazing too that when women are dressed modestly, they're not as likely to get raped. And of course, not, not condoning the rapist. The rapist obviously should be um, put to death, obviously. I, I do believe that rape should be a uh, death penalty crime. And they're going to burn in hell too. But uh, when they dress modestly, they don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. But again, feminism says, oh no, don't do that. Don't follow God's standards. Follow our standards and then be depressed. Be more likely to get sexually harassed, I'll put it that way. Feminism is against the standards of God, and the standards of God always make a woman happier. You know, when you follow their, when, when a Christian woman follows God's standard for their lives, and God's plan for their lives, they'll actually be happier. They'll actually, because they're following the will of God, so they're going to be mentally, physically, and emotionally happier. When they follow the world's way, which is feminism, they're not going to be that way. They're going to be sad, they're going to be depressed, they're not, it's kind of funny because they say, oh, I don't want a man to rule over me. So then you go to the workforce and have a male boss rule over you and tell you what to do. Okay? Sure. And we're not going to get into the whole abortion thing and want to fornicate around and kill their babies. Um, feminism is a violation of God's standard and thus not even healthy for women. But Christian women ought to not be feminists. Okay? Feminism, there's no such thing as Christian feminism. I, I hear this thing on Wikipedia that's Christian feminism. No, there's not. Okay? Feminism is against the word of God. And it's also it's not scientifically healthy either. I mentioned that earlier. But again, what are the rules for women? To be su be submissive to their husbands, to obey their husbands. The uh, husband is the head of the woman. The man is the head of the woman. They're supposed to marry, have children, be keepers at home, dress modestly. And when it comes to the churches, they're supposed to keep silent and they're not supposed to teach in the churches. That's simple. And when you follow God's plan, the Christian woman will be happier. When they follow the feminist plan, they're going to be upset. That's simple. Psychologically, it's a psychological fact. It's a psychologically have been proven that women are happier when they're stay-at-home mothers. So don't be deceived by the modern feminist agenda of rebellion. That's what it comes down to. It's rebellion. Don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.